David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I really did not want to make this video. I, I tried very hard not to make this video, but in the end, I really didn't have a choice. Uh, if you have watched any of my reviews for some time, you will know that I am generally a rather positive person. I tend to take a positive tone in my reviews. I'm not afraid to talk about things that I don't like about a pen, but you know I won't rant and rave about it or take pot shots. Sometimes you really need to listen to what I'm saying and not just the tone of how I'm saying it. Above all else, I try to be fair in my reviews. Fair to viewers as well as fair to pen manufacturers. And I feel that it is fair to say that what I have for you today is without a doubt the worst pen I have ever reviewed. Uh, and that would be a pen which you are most likely not that familiar with, which is the Acrif Blender. Um, I'll tell the entire story about this uniquely designed pen, what it's supposed to do, and how it doesn't meet expectations, and in my opinion, it is a complete and utter failure. And how I gave the company who created this pen multiple opportunities to fix the issues I was having with it. Um, I'll go over the parts and features of this pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. Uh, I will show some measurements, size comparisons, and maybe provide a writing sample. We'll see. Uh, Acrev is a company based out of Mumbai, India. I became familiar with them at the DC show this year. They had a table there and uh, they had one pen, the Blender, which really stood out to me. It had a unique design and made some intriguing promises that I was eager to check out. On top of that, the price for this pen was only approximately $40. The company was nice enough to provide me with one to review, and here it is. It comes in this little case, and here is the pen. So what I'm going to do here is go over the parts and features of the blender and how the company claims it will operate. Uh, and then I will get into the issues I experienced. The blender is made from a transparent acrylic. Uh, it is a decent sized pen. Uh, the distinguishing feature of this pen are the three ink chambers. The idea is you could fill each of these three chambers with different inks. And then the colors will mix to create a new color of your own design. The cap twists off and underneath we have a number six size titanium nib. The nib is available in fine, medium, broad, as well as 1.1 and 1.4 stubs. The company states that since this nib is made from titanium, which is non-corrosive, that mixing inks from different manufacturers will not cause any long-term issues with the nib. And here's a look at the Ebonite feed. Uh, the boring out of this material is a bit rough. There was a, a bit of debris throughout the cap when I received this pen. Um, I will say the cap threads are rather tight as well. It takes an inordinate effort to cap and uncap this pen. And while the cap will somewhat post, it's not particularly secure, so it's something that you would use unposted. Okay. That is the gist of what this pen is. Now, what I wanted to do is get into the story behind this pen and what makes it the worst I have ever reviewed. Um, I realize this is a bit of talking, but I feel it's important. When I first saw this pen, I was genuinely excited. A $40 pen with a titanium nib that can mix three ink colors, uh, that sounded pretty cool to me. I was skeptical that the ink mixing would actually work, but wanted to give the company a benefit of the doubt. I, you know, I mean, they wouldn't be selling something which doesn't work at all, would they? Uh, they were nice enough to provide me with a pen for review, like I said. Uh, at their DC show, their table happened to be right next to a friend of mine who was a pen maker. And after being handed the pen, I literally handed it over to him to check out. Uh, he took a lick at the nib in a loop and quickly grimaced. Um, I checked it out myself and the tines were significantly far apart, more than you would expect. Now, typically I'm not going to go back to a company about an issue with a pen that they provided me for a review. What, have I have, what I have in my hands is what is going to get reviewed. However, this was a small company looking to get some additional exposure in the U.S. and I wanted to make sure they were providing me with what customers would be willing to expect. 
Uh, you know, I stepped back over to their table and let them know that the nib appeared to be less than ideal. Uh, they apologized and traded out the nib on my pen. Uh, when I received it back, I could tell right away, just with my naked eye, that the tines were out of alignment. I gave it back to them. They proceeded to adjust the tines with their hands, no loop or anything. Uh, and then when they gave it back, basically I thought to myself, the nib is what it is at this point. I gave them a chance to fix it. Actually, two chances to fix it. Okay, fast forward to getting this pen home to test it out. It failed miserably for reasons that I will show you here in a minute. At that point, I contacted the company again. I detailed all of the issues I was experiencing and told them that if I were to give an honest review of the pen I had in my hand, it would not be very positive. I asked them if the pen I had in my possession was an accurate representation of what customers would receive when they purchased the pen. Uh, they replied, letting me know that the problems I was experiencing was most likely due to an incorrect feed being put in the pen. Um, I again gave them the benefit of the doubt and asked that they send a replacement that best represents what a customer would receive. I received the replacement pen and it had the exact same issues as the first one. Uh, at this point, I thought to myself, okay, I gave them multiple chances and I felt it was necessary to go ahead with this review. Okay, that was a lot of talk, but I felt that the backstory on this pen was uh, very important for you to know. It is now time to demonstrate the issues with this pen, and in order to do so, please join me over here at camera two. Okay, uh, I'm not going to bother with some size comparisons and measurements for this review. Now, I choose my words very carefully when doing a review. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever said in a review that a pen is bad. There might be aspects of a pen which I which don't match up with my personal tastes and preferences, but you know it might match up perfectly with your tastes and preferences. That's why uh, my strategy with reviews is to provide you with as much information as possible so that you can make a decision how something will or will not work for you. So let me go over the information which leads me to the conclusion to say that this is the worst pen I have ever reviewed. Okay, so the idea with the blender is that you fill each of these three chambers with ink, and then they will blend together to make a unique concoction. Now, it sounds interesting in concept. Now, I had mentioned this before, but the cap is just much tighter than I would like it to be. It can be a challenge to remove and replace it. Once you removed the cap, um, here's another look at the nib. Um, you know, it looks a little bit rough. The, uh, the logo is off center. Uh, the tine slit is significantly off center. And, and I'm not sure if this nib actually has tipping on it or if it's just molded on the end to provide a writing surface. Uh, the ebonite feed looks nice enough. Uh, and that uh, the section is a decent size. Uh, and it doesn't feel, and it does feel good in the hand. Uh, the step up to the barrel is slightly larger than I like to see, but that's a very minor issue. Okay, let's load this pen up with ink. When I received this pen, they also provided three syringes. Uh, the problem is the syringes they provided with this pen were not blunt syringes. They were actual medical grade sharp needles. Um, you can see here, this is just a medical grade sharp needle there. Um, you can see it here in a comparison with a blunt syringe. Uh, so you can see the difference between the two. Um, you know, first of all, it's dangerous to be providing a sharp syringe to people. I'm not even sure if it's legal. Um, and also the syringe is so small that it's difficult to suck up any ink with it. Um, I let the company know about this and strongly recommend that they not send these syringes to customers. And when I received my replacement pen, uh, two syringes were included and they were the very same skinny syringes, but the sharp tips, I don't know if you could really see here, but the sharp tips had been snipped off so that the ends were a bit deformed, which actually reduced the usability of the syringes even more. Okay, here in the pen, I can understand mixing two inks together to make a different color. If you mix blue and yellow, you're gonna make green. But if you mix three different colors together, then you're gonna end up with something rather dark. Uh, if you mix three primary colors together, you will essentially get black. 
So with these three chambers, I'm assuming that what they want you to do is to fill two with one color and the third with a different color. So for this experiment, let's use a couple of inks from Private Reserve. Uh, we have neon blue as well as neon yellow. So let's see if we can make some neon green. So in order to fill this up, we remove the section. Let's set these things aside. And you can see here that there's just three holes in there. And I'm gonna use my blunt syringe just cause I don't feel comfortable using uh, the ones they provided. And carefully, we will go ahead and fill up. I wanna do so somewhat slowly. There we go. Fill up one, fill up two, and then actually, you know what? I guess I'm going to have to use one of their syringes. We'll use one of the, the second one that they sent. It's a little harder to pull this up because the nib is, or the, uh, the needle is so thin. And let's go ahead and fill up this third one. And you can right away see one of the problems with this pen. Let me go ahead and set these aside so we don't have any incidents. So let me go ahead and put the section back on here to trap the ink. And you can see one of the main problems here is that the ink will not move, even when I turn this upside down. So I've turned this upside down and the ink is not moving. Uh, that's because the chambers are just too narrow. Um, you know, I've tested this pen with like four different brands of ink and on each occasion the ink when it went into the chambers cannot overcome the surface tension so the ink will not flow at all. So this is what you're forced to do. I'm actually going to put the cap on here because it gets to be a bit of a mess. So in order to, and you can tell even with the, um, with the yellow, the yellow won't go back into the back portion either. So you're forced to kind of have to shake these together. So I'm just going to kind of shake these together. And you can see even when shaking it, the ink really did not move from the chambers and I am hitting on it pretty hard. You can see a little bit got in there. And now you can see that a little bit changed. You can see the yellow completely emptied, but both of the blues stayed full. Um, you can see that there is some green that is in the section, but then you could also see that some yellow came out the end. Now, I was kind of beating hard on that, but you can see that the colors didn't necessarily mix, uh, that they kind of uh, couldn't overcome the surface tension of the individual chambers and really didn't mix at all. Now, this is the second pen that I received. Uh, I stored this pen nibbed down overnight because I basically did the exact same thing I did on this on what I showed you. I filled these up. You can see they were actually equal when I filled them up. They emptied unequally. Uh, and then overnight, uh, a great deal of ink, basically all of the ink that was in the section, completely dripped out of the pen and into the bottom of the cap. Now through normal use and jostling about, you know, it's common to occasionally have a small amount of ink make its way into the cap, but this is out of the ordinary. If I open this cap up with that much ink in there, it would really have a, uh, a mess on my hands. Um, I mentioned this near the top of the review, but one of my main goals of each review is to be fair. Uh, and I hope that I've done that here. Uh, I think that, I, you know, I'm just frustrated. I don't like to see pen companies fail. Um, you know, I'm not even going to open up and do a writing sample with this just because it's going to make a mess. Uh, and then what happens is any ink that was in the, uh, the section uh, quickly goes away because there's no ink that is flowing behind it. So, you know, a writing sample is pretty useless with this pen as well. Um, you know, I, I don't like to see pen companies fail, especially when they're trying to be innovative and bring something new and unique to the market. Uh, 
But I feel, uh, you know, that I went above and beyond to make sure that I could show this pen in its best light. And all I discovered is that there is no best light to be had. Even at only $40, this pen is far from worth the price. Uh, while I would not recommend purchasing this pen, I hope you at least found this review to be entertaining. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.